are we overexposed? I do believe we might be. Let's just like underexpose me. I look better in the dark. <laughs> okay. Wow. Anyways, hello and welcome to a video that I have been meaning to record a long time ago. And this is the video that a lot of you have been asking for. I a lot of you is really a big stretch. I think like 10 people asked for this. And that is why I have decided to stop growing in pond. I will share my experience with you. I will repot some of the plants. Actually, repot is really, again, a bit generous. I'm not really repotting them as much as I am rescuing them. And these are the plants, some of my favorite plants, some of my favorite Hoyas that just took a nose dive in pond. I will tell you what led to that. I will tell you what my theories are. And again, this is a completely subjective video. I'm not trying to be objective. This is not objective with Miro or objective plants with me. It's completely subjective. And if you love growing in pond, keep growing in pond. If you never experienced any issues, I hope you don't, you know, whatever works for you. I don't care if you grow even in Lego, what you do, you do what works for you works for you. And I think no one should really get upset about this. Of course, some people will. So let's just get canceled for not growing in pawn anymore. I am genuinely terrified to look at the Hoyas, but it must be done. I'm looking off to the side because my camera screen has died. So I have hooked up my camera to my computer and I will 100% probably get pawn on my laptop, which is what laptops are made for. First, we have Hoya Li from China. And I do want to transition these, I want to transition all of my plants away from pawn. We will see today exactly why. Now, this one is actually not looking the worst. There are some issues here, but it's not looking the worst. I just do want to take a look at this plant, perhaps chop it up in several bits. This looks so empty it's because there were a couple of other plants in here. Those have not completely left us, but they're not completely with us. There were, I think, three of them. Hoya uenanensis was here. Imagine it. Just imagine a nice Hoya uenanensis, and then imagine a nice Hoya lee with small fuzzy leaves, and then this one is the one that stayed. And they were not overpotted. This pot was not too big. However, what I learned is that sometimes some Hoyas will not transition very well from a smaller pot to a larger pot in pond. So let's get this one out. And I think I would like to make a bushier plant from this. Before we even get to that part, I want to get all of them out of the pond. So I will need some dumping vessel. And I'm not going to show you all of the plants. I have here five pots that are similar to this one. They do have more plants. And then I do have, I think, three more pots. Those are not, I'm not going to do on camera. It would be a very long video. This is going to be a very long video. It is also probably be a good amount of ranting. So just get prepared. Also, I'm extremely bored of myself when I have to edit. <laughs> like, I just, you know, we do not need any of that. And these have been watered recently. So there is still water in this reservoir. And you will see <laughs> some of them look still dehydrated. There was lacquer on the bottom and let's just start there. Let's just start explaining why I put lacquer on the bottom of these pots. I put lacquer on the bottom of these pots because what I noticed in pond is that there will be this accumulation of, I think it's like some sort of uh, dust from lava rock and from pumice. Not so much from pumice. I didn't notice this in pots that are purely, you know, where I purely grow hoys in pumice. But it does happen with Hoyas that I do grow in pond, which has lava rock in it. And lava rock is extremely dusty. Now, my pond has been pre-washed. It's a DIY mix of two parts lava rock, two parts pumice, and one part zeolite. And all the components have been rinsed off. And I have to tell you, at one point I stopped to rinse them off because, first of all, it's a lot of water that you need to spend in my experience it was a lot of water and even then it was still not clear right the water would run clear but if you mix it up a bit like if you agitate the lava rock there would be just even more so i stopped doing that it's very consuming process as you can see a lot of these roots will have this dry rot going on you can see that and these roots were healthy 
You could say this is severely underwatered, but I mean, I don't know where to spill this water to prove it to you. I mean, I can show it to you. You see, there is some water, but if you put it like this, that reservoir is half full. It's half full reservoir. It's just not doing what's supposed to do, right? And I don't think it's the pots issue, honestly. I have been experiencing this in many different pots as well that are self-watering. I think a lot of the roots die after the repot. I guess there are no roots near the bottom to wick the water. They say that you're supposed to, when you repot and self-water in pot, you're supposed to top water for a couple of weeks and then, or for a month maybe, depends. Each self-watering pot has different instructions, and then you can start to water from the bottom, which is everything that I did. However, it has not worked. What did work for me is to cut my plant into cuttings, put it in pond, put it in self-watering pot, unrooted cuttings, put it in my grow tent, in my cabinet, and it just roots. I do have an example, and they have done lovely. This Hoya, that is not trellised in the best way, but this Hoya erythrina, is about a year old now, just over a year old, and I put two cuttings here, and it was really struggling before that, but clearly it worked for this one, so I just decided to restart it with, or maybe it was three cuttings, I, th I see three. So, you know, it has been explosive growth, but, you know, I just don't want to restart a plant every time I decide to repot it. With this Hoya Li from China, I do think I'm going to get rid of most of these roots and then keep the base. So we'll move that to the side because I just want to get everything out. I'm, I'm terrified. Uh, I have lost more plants from these mixes as well. One of my favorite Sigillatis or Affinity Sigillatis GPS 7240 looks so bad. I think it's gone but let's start with this this doesn't look bad however since i'm doing this i think i'm just going to go ahead and move these as well we have here hoya a cross with hoya memoria i think ir26 oh no we did break that vine which is unfortunate but life is unfortunate we have hoya lacunosa from laos and i can't remember this i have it in my list it's either l or Hoya Rachel, but I'm not quite sure, to be quite honest, and it doesn't matter. We are not here to ID the Hoyas. Is there a different time where you could announce the hour? Especially because it's not the hour. Anywho, these don't look terrible, so we are grateful for that. It's still fine to root plants in, I think. You can do that, but just long term, it doesn't work for me. I've been growing for two years in Pawn, I think close to two years, and I will tell you for a lot of growers, they have told me they've had a similar experience. A lot of very experienced growers have had issues growing Hoyas in Pawn. One of the issues is that plants grow roots really fast. They fill out the pot and you need to repot. You don't have to repot. You can leave the plant in, but Hoyas will react differently. Different species will react differently. I have around 400 different Hoyas. No repetitions there. Sure, some of our similar species, but different clones, but 400 plants, different plants. And some won't mind if you don't repot them. Some will stop growing. It's also interesting when you repot Hoyas, some of them will lose the roots. Some of them won't. If you repot from pond to pond, from a smaller to a larger pot, some don't mind. I've had many experiences where they didn't mind. None of my caudatas that look very nice in the back, they did not mind, and I was not gentle. I was gentle with these ones. No issues with those. Ivra Sherry is also in the cabinet. That one did not... hates pawn. Hates everything. I think that's a common thing for Ivra Sherry. I did report quite a lot of them that, you know, they were a success. And here you can see these are a success. This Hoyali, not too bad. Sigillatis, no, no, no. Variegated Valiniana, absolutely no. We have had bad experiences with those. And unfortunately, those are my plants that I really love. And it was enough for me to announce a war on Pawn <laughs> and just be done with it. Let's empty this. 
Okay, so these seem to be actually two different lacunosas, which really means I have to check my list. That's an interesting surprise. Here, if you if you don't believe me, let's just... That was with Hoya Lee. There was water in that reservoir, yet the roots looked dry. One of my theories why this happens, why the roots die back when you repot from pond to pond, I do believe that, you know, lava rock is a bit heavy. And I do believe that for Hoyas with sensitive roots, it's just a lot of stress. We have to remember that when we repot, especially in pond, there are, I believe, micro damages that are made to the roots. And I do believe that roots do die back or they start to rot because of those. It is my working theory. You believe what you believe. If you have never experienced issues, I'm so happy for you. But again, for me and for a lot of other growers, this has not been the case. I have had a lot more luck with just pumice. It sounds like a campaign, just pumice, than with pawn. And not all Hoyas will like pawn. My Ibra Sherry does not like pawn. It's really interesting because I, I do believe there are people out there who do grow Ibra Sherry in pawn and it does well for them. For me, it never did well. I'm not saying it's only pond, it's probably a combination of my habits, watering habits, even though it is in self-watering pot and some other factors. But, you know, the same potting mix does not have to work in all the environments. So I don't really know why we think that the pond is the solution for every environment. I don't think it is. I think same rules apply here. I think it can work in more environments, but I don't think it works in all. And I don't think it works for everyone's lifestyle. This lacunosa actually has started to look much better, I have to tell you. I think over the last four years, I have tried different inorganic substrates. I have tried LECA, I have tried PON. It seems to me that with inorganic substrates, after a certain period of time, issues start to arise. For LECA, there are issues from the beginning, right? So what happens with LECA often is that you will get the dry layer on top and the top part of your pot is not going to get, especially if you have a larger pot, is not just going to get enough moisture. So what usually happens is the roots on the top are either not going to form or they will die back. Again, it doesn't happen with all of the plants. It really depends from one plant to another. Not all of the plants are the same, but that is something that I noticed. And that's all, something that a lot of other people have noticed too. There is a very good channel. I don't think she posts anymore, Annabelle. Um, it is My Orchid Room, I believe is the name of the channel. And I learned a lot through her channel growing in semi-hydro. And she used to put a layer of non-wicking rocks on top, on top of her orchids in LECA. And that would prevent the dry layer. It would keep the moisture in. But also when the water evaporates, what often will happen in LECA, you will get mineral deposits on top of your pot so it prevents that as well so issues from the beginning i do believe that sometimes it can get too cold i think in winter to me at least to the touch the water felt very cold even though you know it was room temp water i just really did not like having the reservoirs in the winter even now i just you know in some of the pots i avoid having the reservoir i don't know the water seems too cold to me Maybe I'm wrong. It's probably still, I think with water in reservoirs, what happens is I think it's too cold. Then I measure the temperature of the water and it's like 20 degrees, which I don't know. It feels very cold to me anyways, but I just would avoid growing with reservoirs and windows where it can get too cold, but that's a completely different topic. And then with pond for me, what really has been the issue is you have to repot, it seems to me, quite a lot. And when you repot, especially if it gets very, very root bound, a lot of the roots will get damaged. So we don't like that. These roots, I look at them now and they don't look good. They look dry. They look tired. The plants are not growing that much. There is still some growth, but I have also experienced, in, if you grow, especially in grow tents, sometimes soils can grow without roots. <laughs> which is not necessarily what we want. So to me, I just don't think it's the solution to all of your problems. If you like growing in pond again, you feel free to grow. We are, by the way, getting to worse and worse plants here. So get ready to get shook. <laughs> I feel the last two pots are gonna break my heart. I will most likely cry. I kept roots from my GPS 7240 here. 
because they had to quickly rescue that one. It's just awfully, it's awful. It's awful what has happened to plants that were growing in pond, in small pots. I started them in those pots and they were doing wonderfully, but the pots were really too small. They were eight centimeter pots and the plants were two meters long. And I decided, okay, it's time, really time to repot. Not with these, but with that especially. And there is another Sigillatis here that I do believe is like two meters long. And then to just grow a plant and to go from a beautiful plant to absolutely devastating utter piece of trash, not great. Again, not terrible. We have this Deshidia species blue. This one was doing well for the longest time and then just recently it started to kind of crumble. So we will restart that because that's a lot of bare vine for my taste. This one is coming out of the pot by itself. I do believe this is a type of Lacunosa. It might be Valiniana. Um, but again, this is really not about the idea of the plants. It is about my experience in pond. So we have Colina, which just whatever, you know, could have done better. I think I'm gonna cut this one into one note cuttings. Now these reservoirs are empty, but they are moist. The shedia doesn't look too terrible with the roots. Okay, a lot of these roots are also dead actually on the shedia. Initially I thought they don't look so bad, but they, they're not good. It's a trick. Once you pull, they do peel off, especially these towards the middle. I don't know how well you can see that, probably not well, but once you pull on them gently, they do peel off. To be quite honest with you, I don't think a lot of these bases are gonna be worth saving. Um, it's just not really worth it. To me with Hoyas, it seems that if it has like such bad roots, it really becomes difficult to recover it and like long-term for whatever reason, it's like forever trauma for them. I mean, this one also doesn't have great roots either. It's just not what I like to see. I'm not happy with that. We're getting to my variegated Valiniana. This plant looks awful. It was such a beautiful plant. It doesn't look good anymore. It has a lot of yellow leaves. One, this entire vine here is dead. So we will cut that. We're getting more yellowing leaves. This plant has never dropped leaves on me. It is absolutely heartbreaking. This plant is not easy to get still. You can see how flimsy that is. It's not easy to get. It's not easy to root and it's not, it's a slow grower in the beginning at least. And this is absolutely devastating because there are even more leaves in the, in the box, all from this plant. And have I kept her dry? No. Is pH of my water good? Yes, it is. I think this one is particularly bad. So let's try to do it here on camera. No roots. All the roots gone. That plant was an eight centimeter pot with a fantastic root system. All that is left is this. It's nothing. I don't even know how I'm going to root this and recover it. Again, not a great recoverer, this plant. Not a fast rooter. I will try water. I think this can actually root much faster in water. So let's try that. It looks absolutely awful. I absolutely hate that this is what happened to one of my favorite Hoyas. But I mean, the leaves are dry. The leaves are wrinkly. It may look okay-ish from the far on camera, but it really isn't. I mean, when I bring it closer, that is obvious. Honestly, that is heartbreaking. I will never forgive Pond for that. I will just never forgive it. You, there is no comment that anyone can write. And I know people will try to write the comment and try to fight for Pond. I know it's very popular. I, I do not care. There is nothing you will say to convince me. No way. Even if, I don't know who you have to be to convince me. I just don't care anymore. 
my experience has been so bad. Initially, very good, but I fertilize with every watering. I use a combination of RO water with tap water. I even used before in the past. That was actually more successful, just RO water. I know about pHing down, etc. It's just not great. This is directly related to repotting. I want to make that clear. If someone wants to tell me something is wrong with the water in the reservoir, that the pH is too low or too high, it's not. I checked. It's... It happened exactly after the repotting, like week after I noticed that they're not hydrating enough. And could I intervene sooner? Yes, I could have. This is me letting this go this far is completely my fault. I will, I want to make that clear, but just the initial dieback of the root all on repotting in pond. And it doesn't happen with all the plants. I will repeat this as many times as it is necessary, but... I just can't play this game. When will it happen? When will it not? I have 400 Hoyas. I, you know, have things to do. I would also like to do other things. I have books here ready to read. I want other hobbies. I want to start doing some other things. Yet, I have to spend months and months and months fixing these issues. Which, honestly, I was down for. I really was down for that and figuring stuff out in the past, but in 2024, it's not what I'm doing. In the past, I was ready to experiment with different mixes, so many other things, but now I'm like, why am I doing that? Especially like last year, as I was, I was selling a lot of cuttings in 2022, not so much in 2023, but still quite a lot in 2023. And I've, you know, I cut a cutting from my plant that is growing in pond, I put it in cocoa peat and perlite and it, first of all, it roots really fast. I really like cocoa peat and perlite for that. Buffered cocoa peat, you can buy buffered cocoa peat. But also, before I sell it, I sometimes see so much more growth than what my mother plant is putting out in pond and I'm like, why am I doing that? I never had issues growing in organic mixes. Some Hoyas are tricky, like Hoya medinillifolia, I will grow that in just pumice. Really, a campaign. Can we make a campaign? You know, maybe it's not even necessary for that one. Maybe that one can go in bark. I haven't tried it. I'm not saying I will. And it doesn't have to work for me, you know? Um, this is... I think a lot of people, when they watch... I hate the term plant influencers. Do not say that in the comments. I... <laughs> I will come for you. No, but I think a lot of people, when they see someone do something, you know, whenever I'm repotting in pumice or in pond, or now I'm going back to organic mixes, I'm not saying you should do that. Don't follow me. You know, don't follow what I do. I mean, follow me, subscribe, right? That you can do. There's just like no need for you to change something that is working for you. If you found that pond is working for you, great. Keep growing in pond. Maybe you don't grow the same species. You certainly do not have the same environment, the same lifestyle, right? So all I'm trying to say here is if I'm going back to organic mixes and pond is working great for you, you don't have to follow. But these roots are terrible, objectively terrible roots, and we do not like them. And again, I, I just feel confident talking to other growers who have been growing coins for a long time and they experience the same issues. So I know I'm not imagining this. I know it's not a, just a me thing. I also like noticed, I, I'm gonna say this, I have not seen many videos where people have moved away from Lekka. That was like kind of a silent thing. I still see people, now when I see someone growing in Lekka, it's kind of strange to me. I know that a lot of people still do, but that was kind of like quiet thing when, especially Hoa people moved away from Lekka. I don't know, maybe that will happen with Pond, maybe it won't, maybe people will keep growing in Pond, but that was actually very strange for me to see. Oh gosh, that also doesn't look good. I feel like I need a bucket to vomit how, how some of these look. <laughs> I will say this Sigilatis, first of all, is huge. Not too terrible. Not too terrible looking. I might be able to save more of this plant. Bloomed many times. It looks a bit strange with all the aerial roots from the tent. That one I saved from one leaf, one node cutting. It got mites and it was so terrible for it. But now you have to go through another stressful period. And this is a beautiful Sigillatis from A.H. Hoya, the A.H. 001. I do have flower picks of that one. I like Sigillatis so much. Honestly, I was so upset to see my GPS. And I don't think my GPS, I don't think I can save it. Over a meter of vine just gone. Oh, by the way, some water did come out of these. Okay, let's do the water. 
There is no reason why this should look so dehydrated. And no, it was not too much wa water either. Okay, this one is doing much better. See, that's the thing. Like, why is this one doing better? This other one isn't. This one barely had any roots. And that's actually my thing. I think when you repot them, it's much better for the plant to have fewer roots than to have more. This one had barely any when I repotted it. This one had a lot and most of those died. So I think my advice would be if you do want to grow in pond, don't touch them too much. Let them be, don't repot. Or if you do want to, you know, maybe just decide to start plant over. Another issue is the water in the, or the moisture in the pot with pond, a lot of the times is not going to be equally distributed, what I noticed, unless you top water. And that's why I sometimes would take them at least monthly to the shower. It will help if you water from the top, but honestly in self-watering, I see a lot of the times it's just not going to get evenly distributed, the moisture. And you can really see that in the way that roots grow, there will be zones where they will grow more versus the other ones. I don't love that this has happened to Sigillatis. Sigillatis can be sometimes very unforgiving. Hoya, you know, it can grow so well and so fast, which I've experienced, I was blessed. But you do not want to make Sigillatis angry because a friend said this in one of her videos and I agree so much with it with Hoyas. It's like, I can't remember exactly how she said it, but it's so true and I had to comment on that. With Hoyas, you know, when they when something starts to go wrong, it's not like a progressive thing. It's not like, oh, you know, it's like a couple of leaves. No, it's a complete spiral. They spiral into the whatever this is with some of these. It's honestly sometimes so hard to witness and it's like there's nothing you can do. It's just like let them spiral. Sometimes you can take a cutting. In many cases you can, but you have to act quickly. And in many cases, I was also not able to even do that. I took cuttings and they also didn't take. I don't usually have any issues with Hoya cuttings rooting. I have rooted all of my Hoyas at least once, <laughs> some many times over and when I was selling them. And the reason why I left them, why I left these in the pots for so long is I was sort of hoping that they would kind of snap out of it. Sometimes that can happen. They will just snap out of that. They will come to their senses, so to, so to say, and they will start to grow new roots and everything will be fine. So it will be just like a temporary thing where they will look dehydrated, but like in two, three weeks or a month, they will look better. These have not. I mean, honestly, if you look at some of my older videos, I took pride in how great my Hoya roots were. There was that video, I can't remember when I recorded it, but it was like two, three years ago when I pulled out a Hoya, it was in a net pot in bark and moss. The roots were amazing. And to go from that to this, like I know I can grow good roots. What the heck? So as you can see, the roots that I have in pond after a couple of years growing in it are not that great, especially after I repotted from pond to pond. I'm not saying that this potting mix does not work for a lot of people, but I'm just saying it does not work for me at this moment and I am not really willing to figure out all the ins and outs anymore. I think I've spent a lot of time and a lot of money, more importantly, on figuring out pawn, and I'm just not happy anymore with it. If you like it, you can continue growing in pawn. That's perfectly fine. I have nothing against it. I am always for people experimenting with, with whatever you want, be it pawn or be it something else, but I don't think it is for me. I did continue to film this for a couple of more days because I just thought it would be necessary, but as I was editing this video, I decided that this is actually just, you know, me rambling as I cut away the roots. I was hoping that I would be able to save some of these roots, but that is absolutely not the case. They were just really in bad shape. You can even see here my GPS 7240. This plant does not look good and I don't know if it will be able to recover. I did end up putting some of them in water, like my Voliniana and the Shidia species blue, and I can tell you they're not looking good. My Voliniana looks even worse than it did, and it's really, really heartbreaking because I don't think I will be able to save even a tiny cutting of the plant, and that really sucks after growing it for over two years from a single cutting, especially because at that time it was really difficult for me to get, and I don't know, I 
kind of grew sentimentally attached to this Hoya. So I'm not happy about that at all. But, you know, I will get a new one if that happens. So I guess that will be fine. I did end up putting some of them in pure pumice and some of them in moss. And what I did with those that were very dehydrated, which were both of my Affinity Sigillatis GPS 7240, and actually the other one is Sigillatis NS07039, I put them in a box with damp perlite and vermiculite. I did not have enough vermiculite to fill the entire box, so I kind of decided to mix the two and essentially pin them down to hydrate them again. We will see if this will work. I will keep you updated in a future video, but for now, thank you for watching and I will see you soon. I would like to take some time to thank all of my patrons for their incredible support. A massive shout out to my $5 patrons. My three anonymous patrons, Alex von Siebenthal, Amber Clear, Anne Magret Moen, Angela Bernard, Angela Parrish, and C. Aspen Drake, Betsy, Bougie Panda, Brett Noble, Catherine Molina, Colleen Coyle Levi, Daniela Danub Daniels, Daria Kaminska, Dili Heredia, Diane Sikorsky, Dipanjali Rao, Edith W, Erin Keenan, Ellen Isaacson, Farah, Gathering Moss, Gina Geise, Go Green Tropical, Heather Uppencamp, Hoji Scott, Hoya Heather, Jamie Arsenault, Yana Griffin, Jessica Chia, Yavan Dinot, Kara, Catherine P, Casey Gross, Kelly Cool, Kelly Gallagher, Kelso, Kiwi Mochi, Christy Ehrlich, Leplan de Steph, Lisa Marie, MPLS, Lori J. Revert, Mandy Milliken, Marcel Har, Marcelia Novosansky, Maria Stein, Marina Yarmolik, Maria West, Maris B, Marty Miller, Mary Rose, Melissa Walker, Michael Curley, Michelle Heron, Nicole Ferranti, Mirka Grun Rus, Moa Edmund, Neil Yang, Niha Basu, Nicole Maroni, Nina Nguyen, Nita Macy, PJ Plan the Druid, Rachel Peterson, Robin L. Jennings, Sandra Cornelius, Sherry Kumar, Steph. Stephanie H2O, Tessa Martins, Tia B, TJWO, Trista Bailey, Tristan Thomas, Wendy, Wendy Foreman, Wendy Rossman, Zenia Green, Youth of the Wallamoots, Zurtarama, and Zlokov Nipponi. A big thank you to my $3 patrons, Angelina Farnan, Kilone, Constance, Catherine Parsons, Lindsay Ann, Lisa Helling, Nella, Nerdy Kathy, Syke, Zara, Ringlov, and Tang Watana Sriakul. And a thank you to my $1 patrons, one anonymous patron, Alice Borland, Brandon Pacheco, Christina Greengrass, Colleen Coyle Levi, Couture Helvetica, Emilia Bronson, Joanna P. Pearson, Jolie Sullivan, Jonas Bayer, Hjorth Larsen, Kayla Vavra, Kelly Ash, Chris Perez, Lauren M, Lori Ann Subramaniam, Luzmin Fernandez, Neely Spicer, Olivia Chen Mueller, and Tracy the Eyebiller.